the case of Russia, um, we sanctioned a serious country that could hit back. It has hit back. It has arguably caused us more disruption and dislocation. Uh, three heads of state in the Western countries have had to have lost their um, lost office since sanctions were imposed. Putin is nowhere near losing office. The whole thing is an absurdity. Sanctions are about hurting, usually poor people, by rich people. Uh, they are extremely regressive form of war, and it's a form of war. Um, they are an immoral thing, in my view. Um, you should not use uh, the, the, the starvation or the deprivation of poor people in the country, or, or for that matter, oligarchs in a country, um, as a way of trying to change someone else's government that you don't like. Um, you have, I have to say, to say to yourself anyway, uh, why is it our responsibility to change a government that we happen not to like? Um, but that's a separate issue, and we could discuss that later. But the fact is that you've got a weapon which sounds good, makes you feel good, uh, um, is, 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 lends itself to media rhetoric about devastating sanctions, destructive sanctions. We're ruining them. The fact is, it never happens that way. Sanctions were imposed then. It did not in any sense deter Putin. And they were directly intended to deter Putin. Um, the same happened now um, with the invasion. Um, I don't see anything in his actions that's deterred him or restrained him or changed his policy at all in the slightest. And the issue about sanctions then is we know that Putin's not going to change his mind. He's riding a tiger. He can't get off this tiger now. He's taken his decision. We all thought he wouldn't actually. We thought he would build up pressure and like a school bully and then back off when he got something for it. We didn't think he would cross the line. And I didn't think he would cross the line because it's such a manifestly stupid thing to do and self-defeating, but he did. So we're in a completely different situation as a result of the 24th of February last year. And the point about it is he's not going to change his mind, but we're interested in the people around him. So the Siloviki, the, the security apparatus around him, the ones he blames for everything that's going wrong, the intelligence people, the military, and then this group of oligarchs, about 20 who are close and another 10 or 15 or so who are in a sort of an outer ring. And it's those people that we're sort of interested in. Now, we're not going to persuade people like Petrushev, who is even worse than Putin in what he believes, or more extreme than Putin, or Berdnikov. These people are the Putin clones, as it were. They've, they've made him into what he is now, ideologically. So it's not them, but the, the other people, <laughs> the, 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 the Siloviki, who keep finding that they're losing their jobs, they're falling out of high windows, they're being blamed for things, and the oligarchs, who, I mean, the, the message to them and the message of sanctions to them is, as long as this man remains your boss, your country's not going anywhere. The theory that the oligarchs sitting in, 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 in Knightsbridge are going to march into the Kremlin and shoot him, I mean, the, the words you read, which are ludicrous. Um, uh, anyway, uh, you know, I read Owen Matthews' book on this. The idea that when Putin goes, it's going to be better. Um, don't bank on it. I mean, don't bank on it. I mean, these no, guys... No, next but one after the, Putin, Putin what, somebody um, else, it's the next after you, that. You're going to kill somebody, each one in turn. Well, yeah, it, 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 it may not be yeah, someone better that. in that yeah. sense, but it may I, be someone who recognizes and yeah. can recognize that yeah. the invasion but, of Ukraine but what, is a mistake. What, I mean, I do say, what business is it of you? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of resisting the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and I go to war on that basis. But this, that's military action likely to be effective. Effective. Sanctions are about us showing off feeling good, virtue signaling, um, trying to say, oh, we've done something, even if it's the wrong thing to do. Um, I just don't buy into this. If you're going to do something which is that aggressive, as attack uh, particularly the poor of a country in this fashion, you have to be bloody sure you're doing the right thing and you're bloody sure it's going to have the effect that you intend, yeah, but, intended yeah, to have. Yeah, but Simon, if, we, if, we, if we're sending weapons to Ukraine, which you agree mm. with, which we should, how would we reconcile doing that with sending components to Russia that go into their weapons? Because well, that's what not a non-sanctions policy would result d d in. All right, d don't send the components. But that doesn't. But that is the sanction. But I mean, that's that is well, that it's, is it's, part it's, of it's, the it's, it's, it's almost trivial yeah. sanction. They, they get the component from someone else, and you, you know they do. I mean, the, the, yes, what, they, what you they, proved they, is how much support Russia's got in the world. That's what you really proved. For podcasts, talks, debates, courses, and articles, visit the Institute of Art and Ideas. Click the link on screen now to iai.tv.